We always believed in Hayloft so very much and it never really got its chance to be seen or heard or felt. At that time, the industry, it wasn't set up to expose quirky songs like that. So I guess here we are now when things are a bit more anarchistic and freeform and there's less rules and there's less gatekeeping. Now is a much better time for this song to be enjoyed by a large group of people than then. Well, I mean, the first thing you got to understand about Hayloft is that on the record and at the time when it was released, Hayloft was a bit of an outlier. I do remember very distinctly, Hayloft was kind of like not really a song that anybody thought, you know, there was even some argument that it should maybe not even be on the record because it was just too weird. I mean, I wanted the first song on Oh My Heart to be Hayloft. I wanted the first single to be Hayloft. I wanted the whole campaign to launch with Hayloft. If we start at the top here, you know, the track starts out. It was all about the riff. That's the big riff that everybody always hears. There's something visceral about a good riff that people really connect to. Yeah, more, the world needs more riffs. Less, less words, less talking, less singing, more riffing. There's not really a ton of lyrical content in this song. It's just kind of fun and it's just kind of weird. Whatever kind of meaning there may have been or was intended, it's not very literal. The guitar um, dictated everything. It's like, okay, what are we gonna sing over top of that? There's no room to sing anything contrapuntal. Like, it was just like, this is great. This is a party, let's have a party. So you start to get into phonetics. It's like, what does, what does the mouth want to do around that angular melody? It's more about like, what are the right phonetics to make this energy pop, da 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 da, ga 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 ga, it's like things like that that are easy to produce. It started with the hay, lost a creek, and well, it just started in the hay. It's just sort of playing with words and, and just following the spirit, but there was no real kind of like, I want to write a song about this. Yeah, it was my daddy's got a gun. It was like, okay, what does that mean? And then it's, it just becomes kind of fun. It's like, oh, what, what story could you pull from that sentiment? It could have been a, about anything if it had the right phonetics. The way the song is structured is like these Lego bricks of fierce energy. The guitar and then kind of barking vocals and then double time and then half time and then like a semitone key change and then back to the riffs. Ryan and the band come in with this very arranged, very dense, intricate things that all work together. But when you're going to put microphones up and capture them and actually spit it all through a stereo channel into an MP3, oh my goodness, how do we make it? all these things that are so important and play off each other actually work. There's a little guitar, da, 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 da. like that, that was in the part, naturally how the part was played. It just had that ba, da, 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 at the end. And in the production, we just looked for opportunities to like, okay, how could we really reinforce that? So you get the drums playing the rapid head of that, the bass does it. Uh, you get an extra guitar part right here doing it. And that's where you get the horn shot to just uh, accentuate the back end of it. I remember just thinking, just trying to make it sort of have a bit of a triumphant, almost um, sort of James Bond spy kind of like sting sort of kind of feel to it. It's not a song. It's, um, I don't know, it's a painting. I don't know. It probably sounds pretentious, but I don't know. You know what I mean? Some songs aren't songs. Some songs are just like blasts of strange energy. When we made Oh My Heart, we loved Hayloft and we believed that it was an integral part of the record, just like every other song. But it wasn't like, you know, now you look at it and you kind of go, oh, well, it's the, it's, it's the song on the record. Um, it wasn't like that. We had to kind of fight for it or, you know, the band had to fight for it. There was some hesitation about the song's merit, um, you know, from, you know, the team. And fair enough. It's an oddball song, but you know, for the band, we were like, what are you talking about? This is, you know, our opus. 
and you know we were we were right like, apparently <laughs> so it's pretty funny but like our streams were starting to increase and our YouTube hits and that was strange because we weren't in a new album cycle we weren't releasing anything new we investigated and we saw that TikTok this this strange new app was the culprit see I have a third finger here and so jumped on the app started an account and dove into this strange world of mother mother energy there's a thousand kids who cover it in various ways on TikTok. I think, you know, we, there's, a, there's a permission that has been granted. It's funny, a permission that you realize you never needed. You always had permission to make the music exactly how you wanted to make it. But, you know, sometimes it takes this, a, a TikTok phenomenon with a song like Hayloft that doesn't have lyrics until 45 seconds to blow up, to remind you that you're allowed to just do whatever you want.